Good day there. This is Joe Van Cleve. Welcome to another episode of the Typewriter video series. Today I would like to talk about devices that function like manual typewriters, even though they're not manual typewriters. Um, let's first of all think about the essence of what is a typewriter. Now, a typewriter means different things to different people, but for my purposes, there are some essential elements of typewriters and the typewriter experience that makes them unique. One of those things is non-distractive writing. This is probably one of the biggest essentials of the typewriter experience. And this is something that people in the classic era of the mid 20th century prior to the personal computer age didn't really appreciate because uh, typewriters were the standard way of writing and they didn't have the distractions of computers and the internet. But because word processors are built onto computer platforms usually, and computer platforms are multi-purpose, including videos, audio, and the internet, they can be very distracting to the concentration required to be a writer. So non-distractive writing is essential to the typewriter experience. I think one of the other essentials to the typewriter experience is tactile. The tactile nature of the typewriter keyboard is a very effective mechanical linkage between your fingers and the printing mechanism. And it is one of the essentials of the typewriter experience, I believe. Even with electric typewriters, there's still that sense of tactileness that you don't necessarily get with a little rubbery laptop computer keyboard. And the other thing about typewriters that's essential, I think, is not only the non-distractive nature of the writing experience, but the fact that it's focused. That is to say, typewriters, in, in essence, do only one thing. Now, given these three characteristics, I would like to suggest that there are other devices that have come into the market in recent years that give us some or all of these same attributes of the manual typewriter, even though they're not manual typewriters. And one of those devices that I want to talk about in this video is the AlphaSmart Neo. This is an AlphaSmart Neo. This is a nice full-size keyboard with a LCD screen, a small LCD screen, and basically a word processor built into the keyboard. And all it does is word process. So the Neo, the AlphaSmart device, I believe, has all the attributes of a manual typewriter. It's non-distractive writing. It is tactile in the sense that the keyboard is very high quality and has a good feel to it. And it's focused. All you do is one thing, is write with it. So let's talk about the AlphaSmart Neo in a little more detail. First of all, AlphaSmarts were created, were marketed by a company called Renaissance Learning. The Renaissance Learning actually bought out the original owners or creators of the AlphaSmart uh, products. There have been several different keyboard versions on the marketplace of the AlphaSmart lineup. There's the AlphaSmart 2000, the AlphaSmart 3000. Um, there were several other models that I can't remember right now, but the last version they made was the Neo. There was the Neo and the Neo 2. And, um, so these are keyboards that have a memory, an internal memory of about 50,000 words. Um, you cannot expand the memory. There's no memory slot uh, for a SD card or a USB flash drive because the operating system of the AlphaSmart keyboard is not based on like a Windows platform or an Android type platform. It's actually based on the Palm operating system behind the scenes, uh, the old Palm Pilots. But it does have a several ways of outputting data. One of those is it has a USB port that you can connect a USB cable up to a uh, computer. And you can transfer your files that you've written in one of two ways. The other thing is there is a printer cable that you can connect to certain wired printers and you can actually print your device, your document directly from the keyboard with the print button right here. 
And thirdly, there is an infrared beaming port that is basically like the old um, Palm operating system infrared ports that is compatible with other Palm OS infrared devices and is also compatible with some uh, printers that have infrared beaming capability. That's the essence of the Alpha Smart Neo. It is a simple word processor that is used uh, for writing, dedicated writing. Now, to transfer your files from the AlphaSmart to a computer, there is one of two ways to do it. First of all, because the keyboard is not based on a standard operating system, when you plug it into a Mac or a PC, the computer isn't going to see the device as a flash drive or a hard drive, an external drive. It just won't see it. So in order to transfer whole files to your computer, you have to install software from Renaissance Learning onto your computer that gives you the ability to do the file transfer and you can get that software free as a free download from Renaissance Learning. But the, there's another way of transferring files that's a lot simpler for smaller size documents which is you connect your USB cable to your device you open up whatever window in your computer that you want the text to appear at. That could be a blank word processor document, it could be a blank notepad document, it could even be a text entry field on a, on a web page and you simply hit the send button right up here and what it does is it very rapidly types the whole document letter by letter into your computer into that window. That's the easiest way to transfer short documents so you don't have to use the custom file transfer software on the CD. That makes it a lot easier. The way I have my AlphaSmart configured is six lines of text. There's ways of configuring for larger or smaller font sizes and there are also other font styles that third-party uh, users have created that you can find on the internet. There is a AlphaSmart users group on Flickr that is very informational about these. One of the other attributes that makes the AlphaSmart special, besides the fact that it's a dedicated keyboard and it's very rough and sturdy and lightweight and portable, is the fact that it's powered by three AA batteries underneath this slot. And it will power the device for Alpha, uh, Renaissance Learning claims about 700 hours of use and in my usage mode that amounts to over a year so three AA batteries will last over a year in this keyboard there is a way to turn on a battery uh, bar graph indicator and there's also a backup little button cell battery inside that backs up the memory when you're changing the batteries out so if you find that your battery indicator starts to show a little bit low, I would go ahead and change those. I would also say it's a good idea periodically to uh, upload the files that you're writing on your AlphaSmart keyboard to your computer as a backup system, right? Because some people have had issues with, with both, with the button cell battery having loose connections and you lose all of your data. But it's a good idea like any computing device, right, to do backups. So what about uh, usage modes. How was a, would a person use this for actual writing? Well, what I find I like to do is I like to do rough draft writing in this device. That's, that is to say bare bones, getting words down on paper, just brainstorming kind of writing because it's a very efficient and fast keyboard. It's a wonderful feeling keyboard. Then you can upload those files onto your computer and you can finish the word processing on your computer into a finished document if you wish. You have the ability to move your cursor around and you can highlight, copy, cut, and paste text fields, but there's no real formatting. It's not like Microsoft Word where it gives you full-blown custom formatting. You can't really format your fonts and your paragraphs. So this is more of a text editor kind of a device. I also use this for writing blog articles and I use markup language. I'll put hypertext markup language like paragraph breaks and bolding and stuff like that right in my text. Um, in fact, this brackets with a BR, that's the line break for a paragraph. I, I usually write that right in here if it's a blog article. And then I can import this with a send button directly into my, uh, my blogger uh, template when I'm writing a blog article. Let's look a little bit more closely now at how this thing works.
So my Alpha Smart Neo, I purchased uh, as an accessory this neoprene carrying case. So I'm going to remove the Alpha Smart from the carrying case. Set it off to the side. This is my Alpha Smart Neo. When you press the power button in the upper left corner, it immediately powers on and it opens up into the last place where you were writing with the cursor at the last point that you left off when you powered it off. Now, there are eight file keys on the AlphaSmart keyboard. You can press a file key and access a document that you've started in each one of these. So you can have up to eight files simultaneously being edited. Now, because these files aren't named, if you will, they don't have titles, although sometimes I like to write a title in as on the first line of the document so I know what it is. Um, various people have gone and used different methods of organizing their AlphaSmart file systems. As you can see, I have several essays and short stories and whatnot in here. What I've done sometimes is I use the eighth file button as a table of contents so I can keep track of what the other seven are. And so here I've simply written file one through seven and I've given in each one of those uh, a name of what they are. So that's one way that you can organize your AlphaSmart file um, information. So as I indicated, uh, you can have up to eight files in the keyboard at the same time. But you can also have named files. That is to say, you can name a file and save it in the memory system of the AlphaSmart Neo and it won't show up directly on the file buttons here themselves. And uh, so for instance, if I was to go into file button 7 and let's just delete all the contents out of that uh, file button, we'll just say hit the clear file, hit yes, so we just cleared out that file. Now if I hit control open, control O, right, control O, it's going to list my file 1 through 8 as F keys, but then there's these other documents that show up, and these are named files that I've already written and I've saved with a name. And for instance, this one called True Horror, I'm going to just hit enter, and now it's going to open up True Horror in the function file 7 key. This particular one was a crazy idea for a proposed horror movie. Uh, anyways, so that is how you can open up named files. Now let's clear out this file uh, 7 button again. We'll see, uh, just hit clear file. Do you want to close it? Yes. Now let's say we want to start a new file. Let's say this is a new file. We're gonna name it and we're going to name it test1. Okay? So, now what I'm going to go is I'm going to go control S. And it's I'm going to give it a name of test1, hit enter. Okay. Now, I'm going to clear out this file name from the file 7 position. And if I hit control O to open a named file, if I arrow down, I'm going to see in my list, test1. And if I select test1, there it is. So you can have named files, more than eight files, stored on the AlphaSmart Neo at one time. Now, besides the AlphaWord word processing app, there are other applets in the AlphaSmart Neo. The Neo's operating system is based on the Palm operating system, hidden behind the scenes. But I'm currently still in my file 7 key position. I have the blank document. I'm going to hit this applets key in the upper right corner. And now I have a list of applets I can select. The current one I'm selected is the Alpha Word Plus 3.4. There's also a list of keywords. There's a control panel. There is a beamer for infrared beaming your documents to another infrared device. Alpha Quiz is an educational quiz program for quizzing kids on words. There's a calculator function. Um, if you go into the control panel, you can go to the top here. 
You can do spell check settings, alpha word settings, change the default alpha word font, turn the calculator on or off. You can have the two button on option to save battery life in case you accidentally hit the on button when it's in its case. There's a screen contrast setting and there's a keyboard command reference list which is very handy. And there's also you can view the keyboard layout and you can display the battery status as well and change some keyboard settings. And there's also this text to speech device that, that, that uh, it, it's compatible with. If we go into the alpha word settings, um, you can show marked files, you can turn file passwords on, you can change file passwords. That's the main thing. Go back to the, the applets here. I'm going to go back into the Alpha Word Plus software. If you purchased an AlphaSmart brand new from Renaissance Learning, you would have, have been supplied with this Neo One Quick Guide um, booklet that tells you basically how to use your AlphaSmart device. And it's pretty handy as a starter guide. If you turn around the device on the back side, there is a quick little shortcut command of, of alpha word shortcut commands like uh, being able to do select all, cut, copy, paste, spell check, print, switch applets, and stuff like that. There's a little handful of them there listed. But um, if you have the CD of the AlphaSmart software that enables you to transfer files to and from your computer, then in that CD is a list of many other software commands that are multiple key commands that you can use on the keyboard. And a lot of these are similar to the old word perfect, but there's a lot of them. You can, there is, there is, you know, I would say over a hundred commands you can do uh, to do things like moving the cursor up and down and moving to the previous sentence and selecting characters and lines and paragraphs and, Oh, just all kinds of, of word processor type quick keyboard shortcuts that you can use. And it makes it a very handy device for writing. So Renaissance Learning no longer sells the Alpha Smarts, but they're still available online through various vendors, including Amazon and other places like that. Um, you can also buy them from eBay, from people that are used and people have reported uh, sometimes they have good luck, sometimes they, they're getting a unit with some kind of a, of a glitch or whatever, but there are sellers for these out in the uh, world, in the computer world, but what about if you wanted the kind of non-distractive writing process that's afforded by these Alpha Smart Neos and you didn't want to pay the money to use a full-blown computer, a laptop, maybe you want something a little more distraction-free, what are your options? Well, one of the options is get yourself an old laptop or netbook computer, take it apart and pull out the Wi-Fi card, and you can then have a wireless-free, internet-free, basically, word processor. And at that point, you pretty much don't care about operating system updates, so you could be using an older version of Mac OS or Windows for that case. So th that would get you a portable writing device that's distraction-free. Uh, another alternative, there is this sort of device similar to the Alpha Smarts that came out recently called the Hemming Writer, and it's kind of designed to sort of look somewhat like a manual typewriter uh, in, in the sense of the keyboard, and I think it uses the uh, e-ink type display instead of the LCD display. But they're fairly expensive, and they have some limitations to them in the way the operating system is configured. There's also a guy on the internet that's making his own little Alpha Smart like devices that are built into a wooden cigar box. And he has a laptop computer keyboard, a little uh, display screen, and he's running an Arduino board to power it all with some custom software. Um, so, but he's selling that for maybe three or four hundred dollars. I can't remember the price, but it's almost as much as the Hemming Writer. Um, I think one of the alternatives for this distraction-free writing is get yourself an iOS device, like if you already have an iPhone, you already have it, or if you already have, have an iPad, you already have it. If you don't, and you want something really portable, I would suggest getting the iPod Touch. It's about the same screen size as a small iPhone, it's, it's thinner than an iPhone, and it's essentially like a 16 by 9 aspect ratio iPad. Um, and then get yourself a fully mechanical computer keyboard. 
And with the USB to, to, to Apple connector, you can plug a mechanical keyboard right into an iOS device. And then you can use the Notes app or IA Writer or any of the other writing apps available for the iOS platform. And, and it becomes very similar to an AlphaSmart with the caveat that because it is an iOS device, it's not distraction free if you have access to the internet, but you can always put the device into airplane mode when you're writing with it. So it's, it's a, you have the best of both worlds. You have a real mechanical computer keyboard and you have a nice little tablet screen to write into. So that's some of the alternatives to an AlphaSmart Neo, but really nothing beats having an AlphaSmart Neo. These things in their day were used by journalists and writers out in the field because they found that because of the battery life, when, when you were a, a reporter, uh, maybe in the Middle East or somewhere, and you didn't have access to electric power to keep your laptop charged. One of these things, you know, the battery will last over a year. And once you get back to your hotel or your office, you can pop the USB cable in and uh, send your, your report up to your laptop and edit it and send it off to the home office. So these things are real popular with journalists and also a lot of writers like them. I've used this one. I've written quite a few. Um, uh, little short stories and essays and blog articles with mine. So it's been very, very handy of a writing tool. So as I said earlier, one of the alternatives to buying an iOS, uh, buying an AlphaSmart Neo is an, an iOS device with a mechanical keyboard. Here's my little iPod Touch. And it comes with this little USB to Apple connector and you plug that in. And then I discovered that if you have a full size keyboard, like I happen to have this old HP desktop computer keyboard and you plug it in. Now, when you open up one of your apps like the Notes app or whatever, um, and let's go to a fresh document. Yeah, there it is iOS device and mechanical keyboard. Now, this keyboard is obviously way too big for this little screen. And so one of the things I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be using a much smaller 60% size mechanical keyboard with my iPod Touch as kind of an Alpha Smart replacement. And I've also made this little wooden brass iPod holder that I can set the iPod on behind the keyboard on the table and use it to, uh, to write with. I mentioned earlier that I've done quite a bit of writing with my AlphaSmart keyboard over the years, uh, blog articles and essays and short stories. And I have this recent book I self-published through Blurb called Loser's Blend. And it is a book of short stories. And I wrote all of these, or most of these, with the Alpha, that AlphaSmart Neo keyboard. Um, I would go to my local coffee shop with my Alpha Smart keyboard and sit down at the big wooden table and pull out my keyboard with my cup of coffee and write. And it was a great writing experience. Now, that reminds me of one little thing you might want to be aware of if you're using an Alpha Smart Neo. Now, I've mentioned time and again, and you've probably heard it from other people, how great of a keyboard, how ergonomically great the Alpha Smart is. And that is true. But one thing you'll notice is. If you look at the profile of the AlphaSmart, here's the keyboard. The display screen is kind of flat. It doesn't really sit up very well for you to see the screen. And at times under certain lighting conditions, when you're looking at it from an angle, it's kind of hard to see. There is a contrast adjustment uh, in the software. But what I discovered worked for me, and I'm always, you know, you, you guys know me, I'm always a hacker. I'm always trying to hack something but <laughs> to fix something. But I made this little folding gizmo. It's made out of black foam core board uh, hot glue gun and gaffer's tape and it's basically it folds down and slips inside the Neo's carrying case but it, it deploys like this and it says from the workshop of Joe Van Cleve in case people are curious <laughs> as to what that thing is but it basically sits behind the Neo on the table and elevates the keyboard up so you can see the screen better. Now, the caveat to doing that is that your wrists might be bent up at a little different angle, but for me, I've actually found it's not a problem. 
um, I put the keyboard a little closer to the edge of the table and my arms can sit down and it's actually a very relaxing writing position. So I've made myself this little uh, elevation wedge to elevate the keyboard up so the screen is at a little bit better angle. It's not a backlit LCD screen. That means that under dim light, you're going to need some artificial lighting, but it also means that if you're in bright daylight, you're outside, it works great. The more, the more light, the better on that screen. So it doesn't consume any battery power or not very much at all with the LCD screen because it's not backlit. That's another reason why it has such a great battery life. In conclusion, I would say that the Alpha Smart Neos are genuinely a replacement or alternative electric version, electronic version of a typewriter. It is a paperless typewriter. It's essentially a typewriter without a print mechanism. And as such, I think it really gives you a similar kind of writing experience to writing on a typewriter. And that's why I've included it in the typewriter video series. I would suggest because Alpha Smarts are no longer being made, they are available on the, on the internet and oftentimes the prices are pretty reasonable. I would suggest if you're curious about it, you should get yourself one and try it out for yourself. It is a great doc, uh, to, document creation tool for rough draft writing and also for finished essays and short stories and short pieces like that. I think it's great. I would re definitely highly recommend it to anybody that's interested in writing. Well, this is Joe Van Cleve with another episode of the Typewriter video series. You have yourselves a great day.